welcome to Tin Man Customs, gang. Uh, with this project, I'm hoping to turn this Bumblebee figure into a gold bug figure. So, a problem we've had, we've seen with figures lately is they're painted more with a shiny color as opposed to actually being a nice chromed gold or chromed silver, or whatever. So, what I'm planning on, I found some powder that's for fingernail polish that gives you a reflective shiny gold uh, nail polish. I'm going to attempt to put that on this guy and with a little bit of re-sculpting on his face to give him more of the face shield like Goldbug had. Because that is just your, if you focus on him, is just your happy little bumblebee face. And everybody knows we have tons of bumblebees. So let's try and make this guy gold bug. So I'm going to be photo videotaping the different steps I go through with dismantling this guy, cleaning him up, painting him, doing a little fix-it sculpt on him, and attempting to use that shiny gold. So we'll see how this works out. Thanks for joining us, and we'll get started. All right, so the first step on this guy is going to be getting him dismantled so it'll have a easier time spray painting all the different sections that uh, you need. I'm probably going to leave, I haven't decided yet, if I'm going to try making him the navy blue colors that he had. We'll bring in the, here's the original gold bug figure. So he had a lot of blacks, had blues. Even in the cartoon, he was, he had a lot of, a lot more black on him than he did the navy blue. So I haven't decided what I want to try. If I want to try covering up the black, because that's kind of a, have to prime it and then go back over it with more of a navy blue color or just leave it black. I haven't decided on that yet. So we'll figure that out as we go. So all the yellow on him is definitely going to end up gold, shiny gold. So we got to get him taken apart and that involves removing all these little pins, which typically is a major pain in the rear to punch all those out. Uh, I've damaged a lot of figures in the past that I've worked with just because it's typically using, you know, little punches like this and a, and a hammer to help tap that through. Recently, I have read online where people are using heat guns, heat the plastic up, the pin will slide right out. I already tested it on this guy. This pin's already real loose. So this guy's a little bit of a softer plastic because he's newer. Some of the older figures are probably, you know, thicker plastic, heavier duty plastic. So you might have to warm those up a little bit longer. But uh, the heat gun I'm using is a fancy pink Marvy embossing heat tool. I actually took this from my wife's uh, set of scrapbooking tools that she's got. Um, you can check her out over at Creative Crafticality. She does all sorts of crafty and scrapbooking and all sorts of stuff on that channel. So, uh, this guy, anyway, with the heat gun, I'm probably gonna only going to have to hit it maybe a couple seconds maybe the count like maybe count to three and the plastic will be warmed up enough that these pins should pop right out uh, looks like there's a tiny screw in there so we'll have to get a little screwdriver um, and the rest of it's all just ball joints those should come right off uh, so i typically use these and when i pull the pins out um, I usually wrap them up in blue tape and then I'll label them which joint they came out. That's just me. I like to put the pins back where they went. And I'll usually use a bunch of Ziploc bags to save, to store the different pieces. So right leg, right arm, all of that. Keep it all separate out. This guy's pretty simple, should be able to figure out how to put him back together, but some of the other figures may have a lot of noodly little bits in them or springs. And so I like to keep those all saved out 
in separate bags so it's all labeled. So I think we're ready to go. I will probably put you guys on fast forward through a lot of this process. And so we'll go ahead and start working on him and uh, see how it goes. So since these wheels are pinned in and there's no way to get to the back side of them, I don't really want to try and, because if I heat up the if I heat up the plastic and then drive a screwdriver under there, I could probably pop and pry it out, but I might warp all the plastic on there. So I'm probably just going to tape this. Um, you can tape the whole wheel off with like some blue tape or something like that, uh, which works pretty well. I've done it in the past. And since this figure is going to be mostly shiny gold and yellow, I don't mind the fact that the plastic is still going to be yellow in the back. So uh, I think we're going to stay on the safe side and just take those wheels off. Same sort of thing with this piece. We'll tape all that off and in black. Because once again, there's a pin that there's no other way to get to it. Unless you want to drill into it and find the pin. Hope you aim correctly into it, which I've done on other figures, but uh, the results are so so. That's going to be a pain to put back in. Keep band-aids around. You know you're going to hurt. Well, <laughs> I'm going to hurt myself, so always keeping those around so now that we've got this guy all dismantled gonna have him all separated out all organized there uh, what we need to do is everything we're gonna paint on we need to give a nice bath in some soapy dishwater and uh, scrub him up really good let all the pieces dry then we'll be able to spray paint on him so we'll go ahead and uh, skip to that part. Before we uh, spray paint this guy, we need to make his head look a little more like Goldbug. So I'm going to do that using Avis Fix-It Sculpt, which is a one-to-one, -one, uh, two-part epoxy. And I'll start with uh, cutting away any excess plastic off of the base head that we're going to use. And sculpt on top of that, uh, adding any of the extra details mainly hiding the face so I can put a mouth plate over the top of that. Uh, the Fix-It Sculpt is great for doing this because it bonds to whatever material you're working on top of. So once it dries, that plastic, it's, it's bonded completely to the plastic. You don't have to glue anything. You don't have to cover anything up. It uh, takes paint just like the plastic. And once it's hardened, you can sand it and you can carve off more of it if you need to. So I just always really enjoyed that product. And once he's all sculpted and ready to go, I usually let it sit overnight to dry. 
especially if we're layering anything like uh, a mouth plate on top of the face. I'll let the face completely dry overnight and then sculpt the mouth plate on top of that. So now we can get on to the spray paint and on to the gold. So the process behind this gold is putting a layer of a gel clear coat, clear top coat on the painted area and then run it under that UV light for about 45 seconds. The one I bought actually has a timer built into it, so that made that part really easy. Once the thing has been in the UV light, you pull it out and you put a decent amount of the powder on the plastic and you burnish it with a little foam applicator and really, really rub it in and brush all the excess off, the excess powder off, put another clear coat on top of the powder and then back into the UV light. At that point, it's supposed to be dry and it's supposed to be a reflective chrome gold. Now, I ran into problems with this where it didn't seem like the gel coat ever wanted to really dry. It was always very tacky and the powder Yes, the powder. It's really messy. So if you're going to try this or attempt it, whatever, make sure you're in a very contained area or you work with it on a plate because that powder gets everywhere. It's a very fine, fine uh, gold powder. And I was brushing it off of, off of my tablet and everything around the work area for quite a while after that. So definitely a very messy process. So... Hopefully it ends up being worth it and this guy ends up being as shiny as we're hoping he will be. And after the gold dust is cleaned up, it's time to do all the final paint bits on him. Face, windows, hubcaps, all of that. And we'll just fast forward through all of this so this video isn't a week long. Let's get this guy put back together. guys let's finish this up with our review of what we ended up with so we were trying to do a gold bug from here's the original character from the 1987 figure he was a throttle bot so we were trying to do this character in a shiny chrome gold uh, finish 
which was the goal. We were using the Generations Bumblebee figure from 2013. And did we end up with a shiny chrome gold gold bug? Not quite, as hoped, using the chrome gold powder nail polish. Uh, so he ended up being... More of a 70s glittery bowling ball gold, which in of itself is okay. It's kind of cool. I've seen actual cars have a glittery finish to them like this. Um, so a little, little disappointed, but not too bad. He is going to be an okay figure sitting on the shelf like that. He's kind of cool in his own right. Head sculpt was done with the... Ava's uh, Fix-It Sculpt, and I'll have links down below for the different paint colors that I used on this. So he ended up a little, a little uh, goopy, I guess. Uh, you can see where he lost a lot of his detail just because of the way the powder had to be put on. Uh, basically, we spray painted him the yellow, and then you had to put a gel top coat on him uh, and then burnish the gold powder into him and then after that you had to go back over it again with that gel top coat so he ended up losing a lot of detail because he's it, it was just so layered up on him so that part is not so cool uh, you had to go spray uh, model clear coat on him because the the gel clear coat was uh, very tacky and just didn't dry no matter how often, how long you put it in the UV light. Uh, so he's okay. He's okay. Uh, you know, it's always a learning process here. We're still questing for getting a nice reflective chrome gold color. We'll go ahead and get him transformed carefully. He's transformed into his little car mode. Uh, worked out pretty well. Uh, added, went back and painted some of the extra lights and highlights on the front, little silver. So yeah, we'll compare him to his original bit of an upgrade like I say I'm not sure how well this is coming across on the video but he is definitely definitely shinier than he would have been if I had just spray painted him gold which that's a plus that's what we're looking for is trying to get shinier than the gold spray paint but here's a uh, gold bug for now and uh, if you like what you saw, go ahead and give a like, comment, uh, any feedback or ideas you've got to do to doing some chrome affordably. And uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe. I've got more projects in the works, got more reviews of previous customs I've done. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.